Hello and welcome to CMC Markets Weekly Trading Outlook for the week of May the 11th, 2015. My name is Colin Szynski, Chief Market Strategist. Our topic this week is, has the sun set on the crude oil rebound? Crude oil has been rallying very strongly over the last few weeks, but signs have started to emerge that it may be getting tired and it could be starting to fall back and resume its downtrend once again. Uh, also this week we'll take a look at a, a few of the events on the calendar and other things that could move the markets. It's actually relatively quiet for uh, economic and corporate news this week. Earnings season is starting to wind down and, and as normal we, uh, we do get a bit of a slowdown this week after all the huge events of last week. But we may still see some follow through uh, on these events and there are a few things also to, uh, to talk about particularly in the UK and China. But I'm going to kick things off this week with crude oil. The uh, crude oil, as we can see, has uh, has been running up pretty strongly over the last few weeks. It had pretty much completed a uh, a double bottom by the middle of March. We have a saucer bottom in here, a cup with handle pattern, nice steady uptrend here, and uh, and we had seen they oversold on the RSI, oversold again, was trending higher. But recent, more recently, we've been seeing that this has been getting overbought on the RSI and a little bit exhausted here, and and more significantly now is uh, is what we're starting to see here on the um, on the charts so this pattern here and i'm going to draw it in with a uh, with a with an oval to uh, to highlight it here in the last few days is uh, is things have started to uh, become quite bearish technically for crude oil this pattern here of a uh, a big up day a, 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 a steep climb upward and then back down and then a big down day is a reversal pattern, and it's a it's a candlestick pattern called an evening star. And uh, and what we've seen here, so we had the bulls dominating here, the bulls continued to dominate, but then the bears gained the upper hand, and then the bears gained the upper hand again. Now there's a couple more things to add to this that uh, that make it particularly significant. Number one, this one day here with the uh, with a doji and a, and a long upward shadow is called a gravestone doji, which represent often has been known to uh, represent the end of many a rally and uh, and what this tells us is that you had the bulls were dominant and then the bears came roaring right back and uh, and look at this it's pretty much in line here plus this is all happening in and around this sixty dollar round number so a, a technical objective you couldn't hold sixty and now you're starting to go back the other way even more significantly you had this nice steady uptrend line that had been tested one two three times here four it's broken it not only did it break it but on here on the next day we're seeing a retest it's being retested as new resistance that's also bearish the next thing we'd be watching for for confirmation is a test of this 53 5780 level right here this is the 23 percent retracement of the previous uptrend and a, a common point where you could see some uh sub order resistance coming if this fails would signal a downturn and uh, first support you could see for crude oil would be around 56 dollars and then around 54.25 or so so it looks as though the sun might be setting here we have an evening star on this rally and uh, and it's not looking so good it's looking quite weak technically what have we got here we've got Eastern techniques telling us it's 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 struggling. Western techniques telling us it's struggling. And even if you think about fundamentals, the uh, crude oil has had a nice bounce here, but there's nothing been really changed to uh, to justify this uh, this rally. Really, I mean the uh, the pr the supply war is still going on. Yes, the uh, U.S. may be cutting back on their production, but the reality is that as that as much as the U.S. cut back, the Saudis have increased their production even more. So this price war is still going on. If the if the Texas price was to get too high, you could quickly see a lot of U.S. producers bring production right back on stream. The uh, and the number of economies out there continue to struggle, particularly in uh, in China, which is a uh, another Another factor we could see uh, influencing the markets this week. We uh, last week we had the trade balance. It was uh, worse than expected on both the export and the import side, so it's struggling there. And this week we get more numbers. We get inflation. We get loan data. We get industrial production. We get retail sales for China. So uh, that's quite significant. And uh, and because of that, we could still see that have an impact on uh, on commodity markets as well as on Asia Pacific markets. Uh, before I move and talk a little bit more about that, I'll just uh, highlight here. Brent crude as a and see what's happening there we'll see that uh, that in the case of Brent crude we've also had a pretty steady recovery going on but look it's gotten overbought on the RSI the RSI is starting to come off upward momentum slowing this here is also looking like another gravestone joji 
which we did. In fact, look at this. We do have another shooting star pattern showing up here in Brent as well, which is uh, which is quite significant. And here it is. So we had an update. We've had, in fact, this one's a little bit more clear. If we go here and we move this trend line up here. So we haven't broken the uptrend, but this evening star pattern combined with a gravestone doji right here and uh, and now another doji here where this thing's starting to come back off is, is telling us that this upward pulse that we've seen is running out of gas and we're starting to get into a counter trend reversal. Currently it's hanging around $65, but uh, we could easily see it come back and retest this $62 level, which is a, uh, a Fibonacci retracement at 23%. Interesting, we're seeing the uh, WTI stall out at its, uh, its 23% retracement, showing Brent had an even bigger uh, recovery, and because of that, it could even be more vulnerable on the downside, depending on what happens in the, in the oil market. I'll also just wanted to quickly highlight the uh, some of the markets that are sensitive to crude oil. We'll uh, we'll look briefly here at the uh, at the Canadian stock market, the Canada 60, which has a lot of uh, energy stocks in it. And look at this, we've seen it fail again here at the 900 level. Not only did it stall out back here, but now we've kind of got a double top forming in here, and it's starting to break down again. So part of this uh, this break was on the uh, the Alberta election, which showed a uh, a big swing from uh, conservatives to the New Democrats, who are similar to Labour uh, overseas. Uh, so a real right to left swing in a in a major oil producing area, and that knocked the markets back. It's been trying to recover, but so far hasn't really been able to do it yet. Well, uh, we'll also look here at the Canadian dollar, U.S. dollar CAD has also been uh, has, has actually been continuing to strengthen interestingly enough and this is primarily because the uh, we've seen some weakness in the US dollar and uh, and more and, and it's been softening on anticipation that the Fed could actually uh, put off the uh, the start to uh, interest rate hikes so we've seen the uh, the the loony come back down as crude oil has recovered look now we've got a double bottom here in and around 11950 there's a fibonacci level here about 11980 120 round number initial upside resistance up close to 122 and then this fibonacci level here is about 123 so it looks as though for now we've gone into a sideways range but if we do see crude oil start to go down this could start to work its way back up again Similarly, we'll take a look at uh, dollar Norwegian krona here, and uh, and it also shows us that uh, that this is starting to break down as well. So we've seen here a nice recovery in the Norwegian krona, but at this point in time, the krona is still strengthening relative to the U.S. dollar. It hasn't shown the signs of uh, of reversal yet. Uh, part of this might be due to the fact that Norges Bank last week did hold interest rates steady, so the krona has been strong. It's more following. This is more driven by the U.S. dollar weakness. But if we do see crude oil turn downward, this could uh, could find its way bouncing back up. First resistance here is about 781, this Fibonacci level, and then this is the eight round number here. I'll move now to uh, Asia Pacific markets. As I was uh, mentioning, there is a, uh, a China, a lot of China data is coming out this week, and uh, and we could see some act, quite a bit of activity in Asia Pacific markets based on that. So I'm going to start here with the uh, the Hong Kong index, which uh, actually had uh, strengthened to finish the week here, uh, the Hang Seng. But if we look at it more closely, it is we've had a, a big spike rally here, and it is showing signs of starting to roll over. Yes, we did get a, a bounce here up off this. So this is 27,150 Fibonacci level, 27,000 here in this 38% retracement, 26,485. Uh, we saw it got extremely overbought after this massive rally. RSI is back down at 50, which it's holding so far. So the question is, do we start going into a sideways channel like we've seen in U.S. and and a number of European markets, particularly on the continent, or are we in for a deeper correction? This week's China data may give us a, uh, a better idea. And also it may give us an idea of how much pressure is the PBOC really under to continue easing. There's, there's been a lot of talk that they could do another round of uh, interest rate cuts or reserve rate cuts, but there also had been some speculation on maybe they could bring in some sort of a QE type program, but that's kind of that's been fairly squashed. So we'll see what, uh, what happens and, uh, and what may happen happen with, uh, with monetary policy in China going from here. Uh, I'm also going to take a look at the Australian market because that's been, uh, that's been quite choppy as well. Here. And as we've seen here, this is a huge top, a one, two, three, four, quadruple top in the Australia market. It did break down and continued to fall. It, uh, it tried to find some support in, in and around this Fibonacci cluster here between about 
50 and uh, and 5680. Uh, it's uh, it's trying to stabilize a little below that. There's 5600 next support, 5550 here. The uh, RSI is suggesting the momentum is still pointing downwards. So we really need to see some positive numbers out of China to uh, to signal uh, to drive an upturn in the uh, in the Australian market at this time. Otherwise, it is weakening with uh, with China, its largest export co uh, customer, continuing to struggle. We'll look here at uh, at Aussie and Kiwi dollars as uh, as well because it's uh, they're quite interesting. They've been uh, the Australian dollar has actually been picking up a little bit lately, but uh, it's gotten up here into this 80 to uh, 80 60 range. The RBA cut some of its growth forecasts. Interestingly enough, the they cut interest rates and uh, and that didn't work out. The uh, the Aussie dollar actually popped because everybody figured that great the RBA is done. On the other hand, now they've cut their uh, rates and now it is starting to uh, to retrench its way back. This uh, first support here is about 78 cents. And then around uh, 77.15, if we do get a correction, which we haven't seen so far, the uh, RSI momentum is still strengthening. The uh, the dollar itself, though, is is starting to weaken off a little bit. And I'll just highlight uh, Kiwi dollar while we're uh, in the area. Of New Zealand, the uh, the uh, does have a couple of. Uh, um, economic reports coming out this week one is uh, is food price food price inflation is significant and is an agricultural exporter and and also uh, business pmi is coming out for new zealand this week the uh, kiwi dollar had rolled over here and has broken this uh, this uptrend and has been working its way back downward this was because the uh, the rba um, sorry, rbnz left the door open to uh, to interest rate cuts when the kiwi dollar got close to parity against the australian it seems to me as though it might have spooked them and uh, and so now they're starting to talk a little bit more dovishly now the rbnz raised interest rates four times last year so there's certainly lots of room for them to cut should they feel the need or should they want to do so whether to prop up the economy or get the dollar down but also we saw a breakdown here on the rsi and it's continued to trend lower negative uh, downward pressure starting to build so 75 60 resistance then we saw 75 get broken it's now been tested as resistance next support is uh, around 74 and then this uh, this uh, cluster here in around 7250 and the double bottom low is around 7175 so there is still some room for potential weakness in the kiwi dollar uh, depending on how this week's uh, this week's day depends out I want to shift now to Europe and talk about UK markets because the UK is another area where we could see significant action this week. Following the um, UK election, which was a, uh, a surprise result, people had been thinking there'd be a minority government, there could be a lot of coalition building, but instead we ended up with a uh, conservative majority government in the UK. A small one, but all the same, it was a, it did manage to uh, eke out a majority and a significant win for them. So we had a big spike up here on uh, on sterling on the election news now the question will be do we continue to get follow through on this through the uh, through the um going on from the election here because of course we'd seen sterling weakening with the u.s dollar rally now u.s dollar has been weakening we have a double bottom here in sterling we do have rsi working its way higher positive momentum big base here forming and this is a huge one between about 145 and this is 155 one this fibonacci level here is 155.80 so if we we are however testing this here 155 so we break 155 next resistance 155.80 then the moving average here near 156.60 and this uh, next one, 50% retracement level near around 158.80. So we are seeing base building in sterling. It could still be active. The big news for the uh, UK this week, the first one will be the Bank of England meeting, which uh, really was uh, should have been held uh, by the normal schedule on election day. Clearly, they didn't want to be doing that and, uh, and doing anything that could possibly influence the voting. So they've moved their uh, meeting to the following Monday. So the question with the Bank of England now is, there's been signs of strength in the UK economy. Economy. There was a little bit of softness in the last month that might have been election related. But now the big question for the Bank of England is they've held off and held off because they didn't want to do anything on monetary policy before the election. Are they ready to start raising interest rates? I don't see them doing it at this meeting, certainly. But uh, but the question is out now. Are they, are they ready to start talking about it again? And, uh, and is the UK, would the Bank of England be prepared to move ahead of the Fed at a point where it looks like the Fed is, at, at one point it seemed as though the, the Fed and the Bank of England 
England could start raising interest rates in kind of the end of June, early July. But it now looks like the Fed's going to push off till the end of the year. Is the Bank of England prepared to do the same now that uh, now that the election's over? Is is something that people will be looking for very closely. So we could see quite a bit of action on Monday with the Bank of England meeting, and again on Wednesday we have UK employment figures. We'll see if those were distorted by the election or not, and uh, if they put any pressure on the Bank of England to act one way or another. So we could see quite a bit of activity in sterling this week on that. And, and not just in sterling, but uh, also in the uh, UK stocks. We had, a uh, again, a, a, a pretty nice pop in, uh, in UK stocks on the election results from uh, 68, or sorry, 6,900 up here close to... Uh, 7060 and back above 70,000. It started to run into resistance here. More resistance possible here, up around 7135. Overall, it looks like we're in a uh, in a trading channel with the base of it down here around 6800 and the RSI is showing sideways momentum. So we could see some swings up and down in the uh, in the UK market within this trading range, depending on what happens with the news that comes out of the UK during the week. And um, Something a little bit different. It's not often that I uh, actually talk about Europe and and the uh, U.S. at the end. I am going to just show here uh, U.S. dollar, but it's it's pretty quiet for European news. Maybe something will happen with Greece. Maybe it won't. There there's talk back forth this way that way. I mean, who threats and, and promises and and denials and and rebuttals and, and and so who knows what's going to happen here? Whether we actually do get a deal or 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 not or just more talk. But uh, the euro dollar has had put in almost a double bottom here. It's been steadily recovering. It could be getting tired here, though. The RSI is approaching uh, overbought territory and starting to level off. Upward momentum also starting to level off here. This Fibonacci level is about 111.15. This first this resistance here is about 114. So we could see it start to move into a uh, into a sideways training channel and bounce around between about 111 and 114. Part of this may be uh, related to what the uh, U.S. dollar does as well. And I'm just going to highlight here the U.S. dollar index. To show that after the non-farm payrolls report, we've seen it kind of still continuing to bounce around 95, having been uh, taken down from uh, above 100. It looks like it's trying to stabilize here in this 94 to 96 area for the U.S. dollar. The street has been, uh, in terms of the uh, the dollar, seems to be taking the non-farm payrolls report in stride. It was mixed, and, and all the U.S. employment data has been mixed for the week. ADP was a big disappointment. Jobless claims were fantastic, and uh, non-farm payrolls were a mix where the um, it came back above 200. It was in line with expectations, but it was a downward revision to the previous month. So again, we're getting mixed numbers out of the U.S. The U.S. economic calendar this week is pretty quiet. On Wednesday, we do get retail sales. On Friday, there's Empire Manufacturing, Industrial Production, and uh, University of Michigan Consumer Sentiment. So we could see uh, a little bit of trading in the U.S. What people are still looking for with the states is, are we seeing signs of a, of a spring rebound in the U.S. economy? And is it a strong one like last year or kind of a weak one? And, and so people are still trying to figure that out. And what does that mean for the Fed? A June rate liftoff looks pretty much off the table. Could they go in September or, or later in the year? still remains to be seen. The uh, U.S. stock markets, however, had responded fairly positively in the short term to the uh, U.S. news. We're seeing here the uh, a nice lift in the uh, in the U.S. market, but it is uh, encountering some resistance here in and around 18 120 180. Sorry, and the the big resistance is over here at 18 300. We'll see what happens if we do remain in this uh, sideways trend or if U.S. stocks start to work higher. Because there's two ways you can take a uh, a positive a relatively positive report. You can say um, that uh, the uh, the U.S. economy is improving, that maybe they'll start to raise rates, maybe not in September, maybe in July. And and so that could keep the liquidity cap on. But the other hand, the nice bounce back we did see in U.S. non-farm payrolls does suggest that the economy is still pretty robust here. And it suggests that, uh, that, and that creates a positive underlying environment for corporate earnings, which could be helping to boost the stock. So people can make a case both ways, but uh, primarily what we're looking at here is, uh, is probably more range-bound trading for the U.S. markets. 
the uh, in terms of corporate earnings this week we're, we're we're really getting down to the end of earnings season it's really a lot of small and uh, and mid-sized companies reporting there are however a few uh, retailers reporting macy's kicks things off in the uh, united states as well as uh, nordstrom's and in uh, canada we have canadian tire and rona so those are the uh, the big retailers that are reporting this week more the following week when we'll start to get walmart and home depot and, and some of the others so we're heading into earnings season for retailers that could be significant because that along with the retail sales can give us a feeling for where consumer spending is heading consumer spending has been weak through the winter and uh, and certainly business spending has been as well with the uh, soft durable goods orders for several months so traders may be looking to uh, retail sales and to retailer earnings for any signs of whether the uh, consumers have started to uh, started to spend again or not and that pretty much wraps things up for uh, this week. There's uh, the uh, the trading may be focused on a on a few specific areas as there's a little less in terms of uh, in terms of developments, but there's still things going on, and we could still see uh, a number of markets move this week.